Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hallowed Seamstress Gwen. Gwen is a versatile AP scaling champion that can be played in either the Baron lane or in the jungle. Gwen's strength comes from her being able to be a frontline bruiser for her team, whilst also being able to deal a lot of damage and sustain against a high value target. Taking a quick look through the build with Gwen as a frontline bruiser that wants to deal a lot of damage. Gwen likes to build a mixture of both tank items, but also a few AP items in the build to make sure that she can deal a lot of damage and sustain a lot through Riftmaker and through her passive. Speaking of Riftmaker, that is going to be our first item for Gwen. This is by far the best item for Gwen that you need to run every single game. The base stats work really well with Gwen, gives her a little bit of some health so she can be a frontline bruiser but gives her a lot of ability power and also ability haste you also have the passive which gives gwen omni vamp which means that she gets healing from both her magic damage and also her true damage which gwen does have a little bit of true damage in her kit especially with her first ability if you hit enemies in the middle of your first ability but a big thing about rift maker is the void corruption passive so when you're in combat with champions you gain a stack of corruption every second and each stack increases the damage that you deal by 3% stacking up to 6 times you can deal an additional 9% extra damage and at maximum stacks the additional damage provided by corruption becomes true damage instead so not only are you getting true damage and healing from your abilities but you're also getting true damage and extra healing from the rift maker item which is absolutely great and much needed for Gwen as a second item Nasha's tooth Gwen likes to auto attack a lot especially trying to stack up her first ability because with her first ability when you just use the ability and you don't auto attack you're not going to get the full damage output you want to want to make sure you at least auto attack four times and then use your first ability straight afterwards so that's just to give you that gives you that little bit of extra attack speed which allows you to stack up your first ability quicker and more often so you can use it and deal a lot of damage again another item though that gives you a lot of ability power and ability haste and a bite passive means that uh, the attacks that you deal will deal bonus magic damage and will also scale with your uh, ability power that you build for the boots i think most of the time going for glutton screes for the extra healing is probably the best option for gwen however you can go for any of the defensive boots mercury treads or plated steel caps both of these boots are perfectly fine and then for the boots upgrades i always like to go for stasis just in case you dash forward you go a little bit too far or if your second ability runs out of duration you just take a lot of damage stasis are just there to protect you so when you come back out of stasis maybe you have a few abilities up and available so you can try and escape and for the next item we're going for raw ability power a lot of ability power through rapidon's death cap 110 ability power and the overcall passive means that we will increase our overall ability power by 40 percent as well so overall a great item for any ap mages that you want to go for infinity orb another great item for gwen especially good when enemies are low on health because you're able to critically strike for 20 percent bonus damage when enemies are low on health so it's really really good for gwen when she's sustaining up when she's stacking up her first ability when she's using our ultimate as well that means when the enemies are low on health your first ability and your auto attacks and any of your abilities will be able to deal bonus damage which is absolutely vital for gwen not only that but you get a little bit of movement speed you get flat magic penetration and also you get a lot of ability power through infinity on and then it's your final item you could go for morella nomicon this will get allow gwen to deal um damage and also deal grievous wounds which means that enemies won't be able to heal up and regenerate as much hp as normal this means that it will be a lot easier for gwen to 1v1 in the side lane especially against champions that heal a lot like dr mundo but also really really good in team fights if you're against any enchanters like a Nami, Sona, anyone like that, where Morella Nomicon will stop their healing or reduce their healing, especially when they're low on health, below 50% health. You also have a few other items here that you can use. Uh, note that there is no Void Staff in this build. That's because Gwen builds a, deals a lot of true damage. And because Gwen is dealing a lot of true damage, you don't really need that much magic penetration. Yes, enemies are going to be building a lot of magic resist. And yes, it might be a little bit important in some games. But most of the games, you just want to go for as much damage as possible. Items like Infinity Orb and Morella Nomicon 
Pokemon will just give you more damage overall. Like I said, you get true damage from Rift Maker and you also get true damage from your abilities. For the runes, Conqueror is very, very easy to stack up with Gwen. You have your auto attacks. You also have your first ability, which will be snipping a lot. You also have your ultimate as well. There's loads of different ways that you can stack Conqueror and it's very, very easy to stack not only in the laning phase, but also in team fights, which will give Gwen even more Omni Vamp. So we get Omni Vamp from Rift Maker and we're also getting Omni Vamp from Conqueror. So it means we're going to be healing a lot and also we're going to be able to deal a lot of damage. This is why Gwen can be a frontline bruiser because she heals so much from her passive and also her items and runes, but also she's able to gain defenses from her second ability. Triumph is another really good rune that allows you to restore missing health. We're building a little bit of maximum health uh, through Rift Maker. Um, got a little bit of maximum health, not too much maximum health, uh, but Triumph is still a great rune because it allows us to deal percent more damage to enemies that are low on health. So it gives us more damage and it also works really well with Infinity Orb because again, that's going to be critical strike damage for 20% bonus damage when they're below on 35% health. And also Triumph is going to give us bonus damage when they're below on 35% health. But if you are against tanks though, I would highly recommend to go for Giant Slayer because Giant Slayer is really good against a lot of tanks and bruisers because you're able to deal bonus damage based on the enemy champion's maximum health. Or bonus health, I should say. Bone plating, really good for laning phase. Gwen is pretty weak during the laning phase and struggles a lot against a lot of bruisers and a lot of aggressive bruisers like Renekton and Jace. Um, so bone plating will just help protect you against them champions in the early game and also will take um, allow you to take a little bit more damage when it comes to the team fights. And then we have Nimbus Code giving us the extra movement speed. Um, we have Barrier and Ghost as our summoner spells, which I'll talk about in a second. But Nimbus Code gives us the extra movement speed. Movement speed is really, really nice for Gwen that means you can get into close enough range to auto tank and also close enough range to use your first ability especially in the middle to deal the true damage but if you are in a losing matchup you can also go for sweet tooth sweet tooth is another great rune that you can use to heal up with your honeycomb fruit all right on to the summoner spells summoner spells as i mentioned there is no flash we have ghost and barrier the reason being is that we already have a dash with our third ability which has a very low cooldown so we don't actually need to go for flash you can still go for flash it's not a bad thing i think ghost is a lot better for gwen again as i mentioned with the movement speed it allows you to get into range of being able to auto attack and also use your first ability and also ghost is able to refresh as well um is extended by six seconds of refreshing its effects up to its original amount with each takedown that you get so every kill and assist you get ghost is going to increase in duration so i think it's a really really nice rune for gwen and then we go for a more defensive option which is barrier again this is really for to do with the laning phase you can go for ignite if you want to if you want to play a little bit more aggressive but i think barrier is the best option that's everything for the build for gwen now let's head on to the abilities First up, let's take a look at the passive for Gwen, which is Thousand Cuts. Gwen's attacks deal bonus magic damage equal to percentage of the target's maximum health, which makes Gwen very, very good against tanky champions, and also heals for a percentage of the damage this ability deals to champions up to a certain amount. So not only are we going to get healing from Conqueror and Riftmaker, but we're also going to get a little bit of healing from Thousand Cuts when we deal the bonus magic damage. And this passive also deals a maximum of 20 damage to monsters which makes Gwen viable in the jungle even though they have nerfed Gwen jungle a little bit Gwen jungle is still viable and it's still very very good because you can still kind of negate the early game that you have for Gwen and the, the early game downside that you have for Gwen and use that in the jungle to just farm up and get to your core items Onto Gwen's first ability, we have Snip. Snip has a passive which Gwen is able to gain a stack every single time she auto attacks and you can gain a maximum of four stacks that last six seconds. And then stacks go into her active which Gwen is able to snip her scissors twice and you snip an extra time for every stack you have from the passive of the ability. Each snip deals magic damage and the final snip deals a huge amount of bonus damage. And if you hit enemies in the center of each strike, you deal true damage instead and it applies a thousand cuts, which is your passive. So you'll be able to get a little bit of healing. Now the stacks from this ability is just underneath Gwen's mana bar. So you can see that every single time I auto attack, I gain a purple stack underneath my mana bar. And then every single time I use the ability, you can see that I'm able to snip a lot of times in comparison to if I don't auto attack at all. Now you're probably thinking more snips probably means that the duration of the ability is 
long gone? No. Actually, the duration of the ability is the exact same. It doesn't actually matter how many stacks you have on your first ability. There's always going to be a first snip and a final snip, and that duration is going to stay the same. So for the full damage output of this ability, you want to make sure you auto attack four times and then use your first ability, especially in the center, to deal a lot of more damage with your true damage, but also gain extra damage from the extra auto attacks that you were dealing beforehand to get more snips in there. You can also combine your first ability with your third ability you could do this in two different ways you could use your dash and then your first ability to try and hit the first part of your first ability if you want to but the best way to use the combo of your first ability plus your third ability is actually using your first ability and then using your dash straight afterwards if you want the extra range, then you can dash into snip. But if you just want to deal a quick little bit of burst damage, remember that the last snip is going to deal a huge amount of bonus magic damage. So what you want to do is you stack your first ability uh, on the minions. And then in the laning phase, what you can do is use your first ability and then dash. So you do that quick bit of burst damage with your last snip onto enemy champions. But again, you could do this the other way around if you want to. You can just dash into snip, but it will be a little bit more difficult to land the last snip because it's easily dodgeable and easily readable by enemy champions. For Gwen's second ability, we have Hallowed Miss, which Gwen summons a Hallowed Miss underneath her for a few seconds, making Gwen untargetable to enemies outside the zone while inside it. And Gwen gains also bonus of armor and magic resist that scales with her ability power. The miss will also move the first time Gwen attempts to leave the mist if she does so. So you can see this is a huge massive area of effect. And the great, great thing is, is the broken swords from the target dummies actually indicate that they are not able to focus me at all. So when I use the ability, everyone that stands outside of this circle cannot target Gwen you can't hit skill shots you can't auto attack you can't do anything with Gwen which makes this ability so so powerful especially during team fights not only that but you're also going to be gaining armor and magic resist so even if they're still inside the circle it's still really good to use this ability when trading in the laner phase because the extra armor and magic resist that you're gaining will help you trade a lot easier and as meant as it mentions when you use the second ability if you try and step outside the circle you can see that this ability will move once if you step out the circle a second time you can see that the ability actually just cancels out for the duration so you need to make sure when this ability moves once that you don't move out of it a second time because it will just cancel this ability and you'll basically will lose the extra armor and magic resist that you will get you will get this also works really well when taking objectives which is why gwen is pretty good in the jungle as well so if the dragon or the objective itself is standing outside of the second ability then you can see that they gwen will actually take no damage at all when clearing through the dragons so you can use this towards dragons you can use this towards the baron nasha if you want to as well which makes this really really good however your second ability does not protect you against towers you can see that you're still going to get tower hits when take when using your second ability so a few little things there to take note with your second ability the main main important thing is when you're using your second ability that you use it just outside of range that you can use your third ability and you can auto attack and stack your first ability whilst they're still outside of the circle so they can't do any damage back to you Gwen's third ability is skip and slash Gwen dashes and enhances her attacks for a few seconds enhanced attacks gain attack speed and also gain a little bit of extra magic damage on hit and extra attack range so you get a lot of benefits from this ability attack speed bonus damage and also extra range the first enhancement attack to hit an enemy champion or minion refunds 50 percent of the ability's cooldown so when i use the ability if it goes on cooldown if i get rid of the zero second cooldown when this goes on cooldown to five seconds you can see when i auto attack it reduces it down to only two seconds that means when we auto attack a few times and when we use our first ability look it's back up again and in the late game you can actually use this so so often that your first ability is always going to be off cooldown every single time you auto attack a minion or a champion even if it's just a minion during the laning phase it's so important to get that reduced cooldown of your third ability as i mentioned because we're not running flash because our third ability has a very very low cooldown it's important to make sure that we have this ability up and available as soon as possible now your third ability also acts as an auto attack reset so you can auto attack third ability into auto attack and as you can see it quickly is, is able to auto attack and re, uh, reduce the auto attack animation time 
time. So you just do auto attack, third ability into auto attack. Really, really nice. Really, really simple to just auto attack third ability into auto attack our attack speed is already high with nash's tooth but this helps a lot especially during the early game if you're clearing through the jungle just gives you that little bit of extra bonus damage from your third ability and as it mentions you can also gain extra range with your third ability as well so as i mentioned before you can use your second ability and then also use your first ability which means you don't need to stand close enough with your second ability to get it outside of the range so if i use my second ability and if i was to walk up an auto tag you can see if i walk auto tag a little bit too close with the second ability then the second ability is going to move and that means then champions can actually target us but if we use our second ability and then use our third ability afterwards look at that that means we can stand outside of the range of our second ability and still auto attack as much as possible which makes this so so strong when trading in the laning phase and so strong during team fights as well because we have the extra attack range to stack off our first ability but also at the same time make sure that enemies are standing outside of our second ability so we don't take any damage at all last but by no means least let's take a look at gwen's ultimate which is needlework this ultimate has three cast potentials and you need to make sure you hit all three casts because as you can see you're going to be dealing additional damage every single time now the first cast you deal a little bit of magic damage and you also slow enemies for a percentage for just over one second and in the second cast you fire three needles and the third cast you fire five needles so you're going to be dealing additional damage every single time now the important thing with your ultimate is you actually want to use your ultimate to start off a team fight to apply the slow straight away so you want to use your first of uh, your ultimate sorry to fire out the slow and get the slow down then you want to auto attack in between and make sure that when you're auto attacking in between and using your first ability that you use your ultimate every single time you got the first one which applies the slow and fires one needle the second one fires three needles and as you can see the fifth one fires five needles and deals a lot of damage so hitting all of these needles with your ultimate will be out will allow you to deal so much damage and gives you a huge huge power spike during the laning phase at level five so hitting these needles and making sure you combo them with your other abilities will get, give you the best potential and the best damage output when playing Gwen. Now I'm going to show you a few combos with Gwen. The first one is used mainly during the laning phase. What you always want to do in the laning phase is stack up your first ability stacks onto minions. So you can see I'm going to stack up a few times on this target dummy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash use my second ability. And that gives the target dummy out of range. And that means that that's going to be the enemy champion. So when we're dashing, we're stacking up our first ability, gaining the extra range with our third ability. And then also being able to deal the true damage with our first ability. But again, this can be quite difficult to do against champions that have a lot of mobility or have a lot of trading potential especially in melee range so what you can do is to get a short trade is you can fully stack your first ability onto a minion and then use your first ability with your third ability you can use this in both ways you can use your first ability and then your third ability or you can use your first third ability and then your first ability the first one is if you want to just do a quick short trade the, the, the second one is to do if if you want to get a long trade if you want to dash auto attack a few times and then use your first ability you can do that but Gwen during the laning phase can be very very difficult so it's a lot easier and it's a lot better to go for them short trades that's why using your first ability and then your third ability is normally a better option now this is the full combo with Gwen that you want to use every single time during a team fight this uses all of our abilities together to make sure that we deal the most amount of damage output possible so always at the start of a fight you always want to use your ultimate to gain the slow on the enemy champions use your ultimate and then use your third ability auto attack a few times use your ultimate again and as you can see that is the amount of damage that you can deal in a short amount of time 9200 damage in just that short sweet combo so you use the first part of your ultimate you then use your third ability to gain the extra range you auto attack a few times and every single time you auto attack two times you want to use your ultimate so then you get the first cast the second cast and the third cast and then right at the end of it you can use your first ability to heal up and deal a huge amount of true damage 
Onto the leveling order with Gwen. At level one, you always want to start with your first ability. Your first ability is really easy to stack on minions in the early game. And if you're against any aggressive bruisers, you can use your first ability to just trade back during the laning phase. This will give you that little bit of healing from your passive and also allow you to deal true damage with your first ability. It can be a little bit difficult against some bruisers, but stacking up your first ability and using this to trade during the laning phase is your best option available. You can always... always also use this at range to try and farm minions as well if you're at a disadvantage then at level two you want to go for your third ability this will give you the ability to dash away or even dash forward to try and combo this with your first ability and do a little bit of extra damage with your auto attacks then you want to go for your second ability so make sure that you have all abilities available and then our main damage output and the ability that we want to max first is our first ability this will give us so much extra damage with our first ability and as i mentioned it is going to be one of our main damage outputs during the laning phase then you want to go for your third ability to make sure this ability goes on cooldown less and that means that we can dash more often during fights that means we don't need to get summoner heal or summoner flash we can go for the summoner ghost and barrier instead and then we want to max our second ability last making sure that we max our ultimate when available at level five and so on so that's everything to do with gwen with the build the abilities and the combos i'm going to show you all a gameplay now where i played gwen and tell you tell you all a few tips and tricks where it comes to the mid and the late game and especially during that early game so i'll see you all in just a second all right on to the gameplay we go with gwen this is going to be me playing gwen in the baron lane obviously gwen can still be played in the jungle if you do want to play gwen in the jungle the great thing about Gwen Jungle is it kind of negates the weakness of Gwen in the early game because you can farm up in the jungle without any problems. Invading doesn't really happen in Wild Rift. So the great thing about jungle is that you can free farm the jungle. You don't have to worry about any invades and you can get your core items, which is Nash's Tooth and Rift Maker. And then when you get your core items, then you can look to try and get into the mid and the late game with a lot more power than the early game. You can see that in this lane, I am going to be up against a Teemo, which is a little bit of a difficult matchup. This is a range versus melee matchup, which makes it a little bit difficult for Gwen um, to kind of stay in the laner phase for a long amount of time. You can see the main thing that I'm trying to do here is just I'm trying to push the wave and stack my first ability. But every single time I try and stack my first ability, I'm always going to be losing the trade every single time. So to go back here and take the uh, honey fruit, and I'm going to go back to the lane. I probably should have taken my second ability here as my option. So I can use my second ability to stop the blind from Teemo. That's one thing you can do against Teemo in these range matchups. Is you have to time your second ability every single time Teemo uses his blind. You can see I used the combo there to do a little bit of extra burst damage. I did take a little bit of a trade back. But I actually won the trade in the end. Because I did land the last part of my first ability. Uh, which is fairly, fairly good. The laning phase is still in a good spot, though. And the great thing is, is that we haven't died yet, which is really, really good. Um, so all we're doing here is we're just going to farm up as much as possible. Uh, I kind of mistimed the uh, second ability there, unfortunately. As you can see, I'm going to be a little bit aggressive here, use my first ability and take the first blood. So I was able to use my second ability kind of at the wrong time, to be honest with you. I think I could have used my second ability a little bit earlier to stop the blind from Teemo. But after the blind happened, I knew I could win the trade once the blind was ended. So I used my second ability. Teemo wasn't able to auto attack me at all. I was stacking up my third, uh, first ability with my third ability extra range. And then when it got underneath the tower, I was like, okay, I can't auto attack more. So I'm going to just be, try and deal enough damage with my first ability, which was just enough in the end. Even though Teemo turned invisible, I'm not too sure how close I was to not getting the kill there, uh, but it was enough to get the kill anyway. And obviously, Ghost helps us a lot with that as well. Ghost is so, so good because it allows us to stay into auto attack range to stack up our first ability. And then we can easily win the trades every single time. Um, you've seen that a few times this game, I actually timed my second ability really, really well with the Teemo blinds. But again, like I said, it's very, very difficult. Situations like this, it's like if there's situations like that when you're not looking for a trade back onto him then there's no point really using it like now like there's no point really using my my second ability at all um again i'm just gonna dash forward and just use a use a trade a few times there's a um it's a, for some reason the uh teemo tried to dash forward there not really too sure why kane is trying to tower dive me under tower okay 
Li I kind of misplayed a little bit there. I think I could have waited for my first ability until Kane came out of his ultimate. But I didn't think he was going to ultimate me straight away. But still, I was able to uh, proc the ultimate from Kane, which means that he's not able to do anything. But as you can see, I know that Kane now is going to go back to his jungle. Th this is just kind of like clever thinking in a way. It's like, I know Kane is low on health. I know Kane is probably going to go back to farm in a jungle because he's not going to go down the river. He's not going to go and try and gank mid lane. So I was like, oh, let me check his golems real quick to see if he's doing that. And as soon as I check that, I know that straight away I'm able to get the kill there. Um, which is a nice, quick, and easy kill onto the cane. So two really nice, good early game kills here, uh, which allows me to get Rift Maker early game. As I mentioned, Rift Maker is such an insane item for Gwen. Allows her to deal more true damage. Allows her to easily, um, it can easily get stacked as well. More damage, more tankiness. Uh, you can see a bit of a problem we have at the moment is the Twitch is getting a little bit fed. Um, this is Twitch jungle, so we should be okay, to be honest with you um but it's a little bit scary but the good thing about gwen is that i can just use my second ability every single time twitch uses his ultimate and he's not able to do anything you can see here again i kind of mistimed my second ability it's it's hard to time your second ability sometimes with gwen obviously i'm not like a gwen main or anything um i'm not going to be the best gwen player that you've probably ever seen uh, but i feel like i've played gwen enough now to know her at a decent level and understand her at a decent level um so what i'm going to do here is just auto attack the minions push down the wave uh, and then look to try and potentially roam i can see teemo down here not too sure if i'm going to catch the teemo because the zoe is also there yeah you can see the zoe also auto attack that i'm going to be taking the bubble i'm going to be taking the first ability as well again kind of missed time in my second ability a little bit i could have completely stopped the damage there from my first ability if i used my second ability before i sleep uh before i went to sleep or i could have just used my second ability to stop the sleep in general again it's just kind of reaction times with gwen which was makes her kind of difficult at times i think the paddle star is going to go into the zoe i'm going to use the ghost here and also my uh first second ability to stop a little bit of the damage kane is going to try his best to use his ultimate on me but unfortunately isn't going to be able to dodge away there from the from the zoe damage or try and dodge away from the zoe damage you can see i'm just trying to play around the team fight as much as possible i'm using my second ability to try and stop and get, take as much damage as possible try and be a frontline tank for my team but at the same time make sure that i'm not taking a lot of damage because if i take too much damage then i'm just going to get one shot by the zoe but my second ability there uh there actually stopped the zoe bubble uh from me being hit and also stopped a few auto attacks from teemo uh, which was quite nice and then obviously kane tried to ultimate me for some reason so i was like cool if kane if you want to ulti me i'm just gonna dash back into my team and then kane is basically completely isolated uh from the rest of his team so it allows us to just deal a little bit of extra damage so pretty decent so far um but yeah i'm just gonna message here and just say care for twitch because it is um for some reason the chat just didn't work i guess it was like a little bit of a bug or something why the chat didn't work it's like chat function function not available it's like cool there you go that's what you can do see you could use your second ability to stop the teemo blind if you time it right if the projectile comes through from anyone you know any range champion like a uh, jace for example the explosive uh, shock blast any auto attacks if the animation comes through and gwen use gwen use your second ability at the right time you can actually use it at the right time to stop that attack or stop that ability from hitting you Gwen is also pretty good at split pushing as well because you can deal an extra little bit of damage to towers. I don't have to demolish this game, um, so I'm not going to do a crazy amount of damage to the towers. Uh, but because Teemo is in mid lane at the moment, I felt that this was a great opportunity for me to push this lane, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to dash forward, going to auto attack a few times, and I'm going to easily take this tower. You can see Teemo is there, but he's not going to come here in time, unfortunately. I'm actually going to play a little bit aggressive here and try and trade against the Teemo. But he is just going to back off for now. First tower of the game. A lot of gold for us. 2, 0, and 3 at the moment on this Gwen pick in the Baron lane. And to be honest, I don't think there's anyone in this game that can really stop us from um, kind of running away from this game, I guess you could say. And uh, So what I'm going to do here is try and just take the jungle camps. Gwen can do this pretty easily. Once you get a few items, you can just easily take jungle camps away from the jungler. And this means that Kane is not going to get as much... Um, as much experience and as much gold as possible and this is what you could do sometimes i think this is what a lot of people don't do a lot is when they're pushed 
the lane say for example you push mid lane out or you push top lane out there's no point sitting in the lane and doing nothing you might as well be proactive try and roam around try and get some deep vision try and put some wards down try and roam around to help your team do anything like that like just do anything to try and help your team like in this situation i pushed the lane out i don't want to overstep too far and i don't want to try and take another tower so i'm going to go here and i'm going to take more farm um try to take this scotter crab the dragon is up so i could try and go towards the dragon which is probably what i'm going to do here as well but you can see i'm pushing down the top wave and as soon as i push the top wave i'm rotating around the map trying to get the most gold efficient as try to be the most gold efficient as possible trying to get as much uh, gold that i can get for myself you can see i'm going to use my ultimate here with a few auto attacks onto the yona unfortunately the yona did flash away i was still able to get a kill onto the leona which was quite nice the exhaust though is going to be a little bit annoying and the twitch is going to take a kill so unfortunately there, my first ability was kind of dodged because of leona's uh flash and you can see that twitch is in yeah, Twitch is in a very strong spot. Twitch is 9 and 2 at the moment, which is very, very scary. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have my second ability available because I used it a bit earlier to kind of stop the damage and negate the damage from the Zoe and also a few other champions afterwards. But this Twitch is getting a little bit scary. Um, we're getting to a point in the game now where Twitch is going to be scaling up and going to be really, really strong. But luckily, the Twitch is not paired with like a, a Lulu or a Yumi or, or anyone like that. So we're going to go down to the bot lane now. Uh, I shouldn't really be down in this bot lane. I don't think this... I mean, ADC should never be down the bot lane. I mean, even though it is the ADC's lane, it's like there's no point of Ash being down here. Like, Ash should be up the, towards the Rift Herald right now, trying to take the Rift Herald. But I guess we're just stopping the Rift Herald instead. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I just don't know why the Ash was down here in the first place. Like, there's no need. Like, Ash can stay mid lane because Ash has a decent amount of wave clear. Ash can try and join join during the fights as well. Um, I do take a little bit of damage here from Leona. But I should be fine here. I shouldn't be able to take enough damage. There we go. We're able to dodge away with our third ability. I could have dodged away maybe from the stun from Leona, the ultimate. Uh, but we're still able to do enough damage and get a few kills there. So still pretty decent at the end um and, and the thing is as well is that when ash is bot lane solo as well it allows twitch to turn invisible and easily kill ash like if ash is bot lane alone twitch can just easily use her invisibility and easily kill ash in the side lane every single time there's no tower for her, for her to fall back to and because it's such a long lane it's just so easy for twitch to gank so i i think when you're a dual laner and your tower has gone down just go into mid lane it's a much shorter lane you won't always get mid lane priority anyway and try and get as much um wave clear as possible in the mid lane but you can see ash went into the mid lane pushed up too far in the mid lane and because again there's no tower it means that twitch is able to gank with her with his invisibility and when twitch ganks with the invisibility it means that Twitch gets another kill. So it's a pretty scary game. I mean, this is the one thing that people don't really know how to play against Twitch as well, is that you just can't go anywhere alone. If you go anywhere alone, it's kind of like Evelyn. Like when you're, excuse me, when you're playing against Evelyn, it's like this, like look, like easily there, like they, they had to like, they had to use the flash to get away. So it's quite difficult here. The Vex could go in here and land a fear. Really, really nice fear from the Vex was actually, a, what actually allowed us to get a kill. And then I'm going to keep auto attacking this cane here because I know that the extra damage is going to be there from the Vex with her ultimate gets us another kill onto the Zoe and then we're going to get another kill onto the um onto the Teemo so really really nice there even though Vex did get caught a little bit uh with Twitch again going invisible because there's no mid lane tower uh, Vex was able to flash away and I was able to just take a little bit of damage and tank a little bit of damage from the team and then use it to try and take the tower which i'm able to do so really nice use there of using my second ability and also being able to heal up as well from rift maker and also my first ability because you can see there that we can sustain a little bit during the fights even against these high value targets like the twitch we can sustain a little bit we can also deal a lot of damage against these um ad champions like twitch or like any ad uh, you know carries in general and then that means that the rest of our team can follow up afterwards and deal a bunch of damage see here ash unfortunately gets caught again uh which means that the rift herald and the second dragon is probably going to be taken here uh, by the enemy team but it's a very very close game though i think this game is going to show you a lot of how well gwen can do 
against fed range champions because melee champions maybe not so much because your second ability is not going to be that good against a lot of melee champions they get a lot against a lot of range champions like zoe like timo um like twitch as well you can see here i unfortunately kind of missed my first ability because kane was able to dash away but you can see how much damage we do with our ultimate with that last needlework for our ultimate we could do so much damage so we're going to escape a little bit away here. I'm going to stand just on the edge of my second ability. And you can see Twitch was not able to auto-attack us at all. Not Even before the Seraphine ultimate came down, Twitch is not able to auto-attack us at all because we were in auto-attack range to keep on auto-attacking the Twitch. But because Twitch was outside of our W range, it meant that Twitch was not able to stack our poison on us and also not able to auto-attack. So again, we're making really good use of Gwen's auto-attack range with her third ability and also just making sure you stand on the edge of your second ability so you do the most damage possible and a little bit of mistake from the enemy team meant that we was able to uh deal enough damage and take down the twitch you can see here that i'm going to deal a lot of damage to just zoe the needles do so much damage snip snip and this is why everyone hates to play against gwen sometimes because this champion being untargetable with your second ability being able to just dash and deal so much true damage and get a lot of healing. The champion is just absolutely disgusting. I'm trying to ping my team uh, away here because I don't have my ultimate available and I don't have any other abilities available. Unfortunately, my team overextended there. Um, again, not too sure why. Like, yeah, I mean, it's obvious that the Twitch and the Leona is there. I mean, we won the team fight already. Like, it's a situation where people are just way too over aggressive. If you won a team fight, if you've taken a few kills, then just back away. Like, there's no point of overextending. There's no point of just staying there because you have so much gold. Like, players have to realize that when you get a lot of kills, when you get an objective, you have so much gold. And when you get so much gold, it means that you can go back to the base, spend the gold that you have, and then look for a team fight afterwards. The problem is, is that everyone there that was in that team fight was probably sitting on a good 2,000, 3,000 gold. The Seraphine, the Ash, and the Xin Zhao. And instead of going back to try and take the gold, they're like, oh, let's fight more. We're ahead. We're winning fights. Let's fight more. But... It's about being able to use your gold efficiently and being able to go back to base to spend that gold when you've already won that previous team fight. So again, a bit of a mistake. You should never really invade as well and never really go into the enemy jungle against the Twitch because again, you're going to go invisible and you're just going to not again. Again, it's just another situation like this when we're not able to do enough, unfortunately. I use my ultimate, use my ghost and maybe, maybe take a few kills here. Uh, Zoe wasn't able to land the bubble on us, which was quite nice. You could see, oh my god, our damage there was so, so disgusting. Twitch is still alive, though, so we do need to be a little bit careful. But Seraphine does dash forward, and Vex is able to get another kill, get the resets, and get more and more kills. So, we was able to survive, and we was able to kind of stop the push there, but it was looking very, very scary. Because, again, our team was overextending. But we used our second ability to block the bubble from Zoe. We dealt a lot of true damage and had a lot of healing with our ultimate and also our first ability. I think we can even finish the game here. 10 seconds left. Yeah, we can also attack this tower a few times. 7, 1, and 11 with Gwen in the end. Even though we were against a fed Twitch, we stuck to the game plan. We knew it, that we were really, really strong because we got that lead in the Baron lane. And all we needed was one fight. All we needed was one fight. We use our third ability. We go to attack a few times, use our first ability. And then our ultimate does so much damage in the later stages of the fight. You can see 21,000 damage in total this game. Only Twitch and Zoe had a little bit more damage. But the sustain was there. The damage was there. The frontline tankiness was there as well because of our second ability. And that meant we were able to sustain during fights and deal enough damage during fights to carry this game. Also, Vex did a really, really wild this game to get a few resets as well with her ultimate so yeah really really good performance overall hopefully you learned a thing or two from this gwen guide and as always stay safe and i'll see you in the next wilder video peace